Hi everyone, I'm Lorenzo and in this video I'm going to talk about all Apescape games for the PS2. Apescape 2 is the sequel of Apescape for the PS1. Or Piposaru is the sequel, but that is more like a spin-off in my opinion. I'll get into Piposaru too. But for now, Apescape, Apescape 2. I'll count this one as the follow-up. In Apescape, the boy, I call him boy because the European version calls him Jimmy, while in the US version his name is Hikaru, so I'll call him boy. Okay, so the boy launches pants to the monkeys, and accidentally launches some helmets too, and an evil monkey called Spectre now controls the monkeys. Hikaru, or Jimmy, goes with a net to capture the escaped monkeys in Monkey Park. The majority of the monkeys are typical. Yellow pants are standard, blue pants get scared easily and run away, and red pants are angry and hit you back. And you also get gimmick monkeys, which blend into the environments, and monkeys with even more personality, and there are plenty, I'm, I'm not getting it into each one, I'll just flash on the screen some monkeys I'm talking about. And you also get the freaky monkey 5, which usually are boss pets are boss battle monkeys. You also get vehicle sequences, you also get vehicle sequences, and while capturing monkeys you don't just use the net, you have to hit a monkey before you capture them with the net, and you also get multiple gadgets, like a banana rang, a hula hoop that makes you go faster, a magnet, and more. You also get mini games and unlockables, and the game has humor, which makes this masterpiece very replayable. Apescape Pumped and Primed is a party game, and on paper the game sounds good, but you'll see when you play that the game gets boring really fast. First off it's nice to hear that you get a story, and usually in party games it's nice to have a story, because it adds fun when you play the game alone. But here, no matter if you play the story and play alone or play the game with friends, the game just isn't party enough. In my opinion, the mini games aren't fitting for a party game. You like you get, for example, collectathons or battle arenas, but no mini game feels fun. They all feel bland. You get bored easily by them. The controls don't feel good, and overall, you're better off playing something else. The game isn't broken, but you'll see when you play how fast you don't want to play it anymore. In Apescape 3, Spectre has gotten away and wants to TV broadcast monkeys to put humans in a trance. And now you have to go to the TV sets and capture monkeys with the net again. This time you can choose characters, you can play either as K or as Yumi. And an interesting detail is that Yumi is the easy mode, meaning that Yumi is some sort of music idol and some monkeys just have their eyes like hearts and don't attack Yumi sometimes. So just know that Yumi is the easy mode. And the locales and references are more than ever. Movie, you get movie references, sequence references, and the number of unique monkeys is also more than ever. And in gameplay, even if you first have the impression that it's the very same, it's not. Now monkeys hit you back and snatch your gadgets, and not only this, but they also snatch your net, and send you back at the hub. And that's not all of it. When this gauge fills up, you can transform into 7 different things, like a wizard, a ninja, a cowboy, and even a monkey. And this game too has mini games. The developers managed to surpass a masterpiece. I totally recommend you play these games. Saru Million Monkeys is a Japan exclusive game. It has a game formula very familiar to the other Apescape games, but there's a difference. This time you can play as Spectre 2 and go monkey hunting. That's because monkeys don't obey him because a robot hacked the monkeys. You, you know that the monkeys are controlled via their helmets. But anyway, now Spectre goes after his underlings. The difference between this game and other Ape Escape games 
is that if in the previous one the emphasis was on collecting, in this one the emphasis is on the combat. It's very explosive and you have to destroy big robots. It's still a great game, the only problem that the game can rise is the language barrier. This game is only in Japanese, but aside of that, the gameplay is very good. And now let's return to the game I left off, Piposaru 2001. It's a Japan exclusive game and the plot revolves around collecting monkey pants. Why do you collect monkey pants? The professor received a phone call concerning the hygiene of the monkeys in Monkey Park. So you are commissioned to vacuum all the pants of the monkeys and put them in a giant washing machine. The levels are time trials, you have to collect all of the pants in the given time limit. And the gameplay has depth, not all monkeys behave the same, some of them need to be lured out or hit in a certain way. It's a great game. Just like all Ape Escape games, well, except the party game, which I've already told you about it. But aside of that party game, all of the Ape Escape games are fantastic games, even masterpieces. And I totally recommend you play them, or at least try them, you'll see how great they are. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.